All right, everybody, before we get into today's video, I would like to thank Bruce at the Summersworth Stove Shop. And again, I'll attach some photos in his contact information below. Bruce is the gentleman who installed this boiler back in 2008, way before we even got here on the homestead. He has been a wealth of knowledge, information, and help. He supplied the Molly Armor and the new test kit for this machine and also his advice. I've, I've called him a bunch of times during this. He, he He's the one that's giving me all factory direct recommendations on how to do this. So please, if you need any help with your outdoor boiler, if you need gaskets, pumps, O-rings, seals, chimneys, whatever, he can ship direct from Central Boiler to you. He can do point of sale over the phone, on the computer, whatever it may be. Give him a call. He's a one-man band. Leave a message. He'll get back to you. Tell him Jay sent you. I really appreciate it. If you guys need help, uh, please support him. Local small business. He's in the next county over. Old school guy. Appreciate the help, Bruce. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. The course of this video has take, took me two weeks to do this video. So uh, anyways, we're gonna cover changing out the water on our central boiler CL6048 uh, outdoor non-gasification unit. Um, like I said, parts of this video were filmed a week and a half ago. So uh, I'm just gonna splice it all together. Hopefully it makes sense. Um, if you're really trying to change the water in your outdoor boiler, number one, if you have a different machine, check your owner's manual, Check, talk to your local dealer. This is how Central Boiler recommends doing it for this unit. Um, I made some mistakes along the way, which I'll uh, show you, but if you're really looking to uh, change your water, there's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot that you can do wrong, so I encourage you. I'll try to keep this video under probably 15 minutes. If you're really trying to do this for the first time, just sit back and enjoy because I put some text here. There's some things I did wrong, so anyways, that's all I wanted to say, first of all, but um, a very important part is Central Boiler has a new test kit now. Um, the Molly PH test kit, part number 2500598. This is different from the old blue box you used to get with the Mad Max uh, science set. You had to put the acids in and all that stuff. This new test is only compatible with the new Molly armor. You cannot use this test with the old corrosion inhibitor. So I just wanted to get that off the bat right away. This is the reason why we're changing is because Central Boiler changed their test and that Molly Armor is supposed to be the new the new uh, stuff that you use, the new premium stuff. So yes, that's um, why we're pretty much we're changing our water. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. Folks, if you like that intro, if you're just joining us here, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do a ton of stuff around here, anywhere from firewood to mechanics to this to that. We do it here on the homestead, so I invite you to subscribe. Anyways, let's talk real quick before we do this. Um, about a week ago, I added in this corrosion inhibitor. Uh, this is a sludge conditioner, uh, excuse me. I added the sludge conditioner PN166. Um, this is, you want to run this in your machine for five to seven days uh, before you drain your water. This will loosen up any buildup, uh, stuff like that. So you wouldn't tell, you wouldn't believe it, but a week ago it was snowing out when we added this in. Now it's a beautiful 70 degree day. So we ran that hot for five days and then um, we shut it down and we just circulated the water for the last three days. It's taken three days for this machine to cool down to the water's at like 85 degrees out now. Um, you do not want to drain the water hot. You do not want to add the water when the machine is hot. Please, be, take, take the time and do it right. So the machine is cold, there's no fire in it. The ambient water is like 80 something degrees. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna shut the pump off. We're gonna take the side access panel off and then we're going to uh, drain the water out and start fresh. This is our side access panel here. This is where the magic's gonna happen. Our water is at 86 degrees per central boiler. You need to drain it when it's colder than 90. 90 or below, that's your cutoff. So we're gonna unplug our circulator pump and we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna pull this access panel. There's a little spigot valve there. And yeah, let's go from there. So you wanna make sure when, think about it, our water is gonna drain, 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 drain past all these valves. So you wanna make sure that these are shut so you don't get air in the system. And when we fill it back up, um, it'll refill up here. We won't have any air pockets. So make sure you shut your two valves here. 
All right, so now you can see, like I said, we have the valve shut, we have that access panel pulled down. You can see where the PEX goes down into the insulated tube, runs into the house. This is the conduit where the power comes out. Right here is our low point drain. So we're gonna pop this cap off here. We're gonna attach a garden hose. We're gonna run that garden hose out into the woods. We're gonna drain the water. Now I reached out directly to Central Boiler. Draining, if you have antifreeze in your machine, you cannot just drain to the ground. That is the worst thing you can do. This machine has just treated regular water. Now we obviously put the uh, sludge conditioner in there, but when you put that in there with 400 gallons, it gets diluted to almost pretty much nothing. So what I'm doing right now isn't hazardous, isn't ruining the environment at all. So, uh, but if you do have antifreeze, you cannot just drain it into the uh, earth. You don't want to do that. All right, folks, so we got our, we got our garden hose here ready to hook up. But first what I want to do is, is uh, I kind of want to take, I want to see what the water looks like myself. So we're going to pop this little cap off. That's kind of neat, just in case that leaked or something. We have a clean Tropicana uh, jug here. There's a lot of head pressure there, 400 gallons pushing down, so I don't think this will take long at all to drain. But that looks pretty good. That looks just like the water we tested. So let's go ahead and uh, what I want to see is, I want to calculate how fast that, ah, it doesn't matter. Let's just hook the hose up and drain it. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Again, this stuff, this water has no chemicals in it that's gonna hurt the environment. Um, everything's diluted 400 gallons. This light coloring you see here is just that, um, the pH and the, uh, corrosion inhibitor. So again, it's nothing that's going to hurt anything. So let's go ahead and release the Kraken. All right, let's go check the other end, make sure it's draining. So we have 400 gallons of head pressure. We should be draining. Yep, we're draining here. All right, so we're gonna let that drain. Um, I'm actually gonna see how, that doesn't matter. We're gonna let that drain, but here's the thing. Um, the top of that, the water jacket hasn't seen oxygen in since 2008 when the machine was put in. So as soon as that water jacket, as soon as this machine is empty, we're gonna fill it up right away because I don't wanna leave that metal exposed to oxygen very long. So you gotta stay up on this. So don't drain the water and refill it three days later. You gotta do it literally the minute it ends, you gotta drain it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go get the hose, run the hose over here, pop the top cap off and we'll get ready because this probably is not gonna take long to drain. Now this might be tough to see on camera, but we have a, uh, a water level check here. This line says full. So obviously once our water level gets down pretty much to nothing, um, we know we can start adding water in. So this is the new stuff we'll be using. This is right from Central Boiler. This is the Molly Armor 350 corrosion inhibitor. This is Central Boiler's new stuff. Um, there's no more that other, um, the other chemicals and the other testing was a bit pain in the butt, but um, anyways, just for your sake, you add one gallon of Molly Armor 350 for every 200 gallons of system water. So our central boiler classic here holds 393. So we're going to obviously put the two gallons in. Um, uh, just a quick tip. Anytime water is added to the system, including the initial fill up, it is important to immediately bring the furnace up to operating temperature at 185 degrees. Circulate the water in the system for at least 24 hours and then test the treated water for the recommended corrosion inhibitor. See owner's manual, blah, 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 blah. If system has any freeze in it, reference the owner's manual as well, because it's a little bit of a different process. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to, um, when the machine's done draining, we're going to fill it, add these two gallons in. We're going to run it. Today's Saturday. I'll test the water first thing Monday at the stove shop. We'll keep the machine running till Monday. That'll be well over 24 hours. So kind of worked out nice. All right, folks. So we're on top of the boiler here. We have our garden hose. What we're going to do first, sorry to do this with kind of, it's tough to do, ooh, little spider. It's tough to do with kind of two hands, but we're gonna put our hose in the machine. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this right here. 
We're gonna put our hose in the machine here. That should hold. Again, not sure how much you can see, but our water level, our water level is already down to here. So we got a pretty good drain, pretty good flow rate. It's draining pretty fast because you got 400 gallons of head pressure. It's coming out there faster than it comes out of the house. <laughs> All right, folks, a couple hours later, let's see, uh, let's see if we're still draining. I think we're done. Oh yeah, see? No more water coming out of our hose. Besides that little bit that's probably left in the hose. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on the water. We're gonna just let that rinse for a little bit and then we'll shut that spigot and uh, fill it up. I think you can hear that gurgling filling up our water jacket. So if we come back over here, once we get just clean, clean water, we'll shut the spigot here. All right, so this is the water. Yeah, this is the water that we're draining out of the boiler. So yeah, that's pretty good. Light tint, light tint of the old corrosion inhibitor, but uh, that's okay though. The 300 gallon, 300 something gallons of new water, even if there's 30 gallons in the machine, that'll be okay. Um, but yeah, that's good to roll now. Good to fill up with fresh water. All right, now we're gonna add our corrosion inhibitor here to the fill where we were just filling up with water. I guess I miss uh, mistimed my our water intake here. <laughs> Let's shut the water off and see what's going on. <laughs> yep, I think we're uh, I think we're a little over full. <laughs> Oops. Put our vent cap back on. Now the next thing to do is. Um, get a fire going and bring the water up to 185 degrees and circulate it for 24 hours. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now we're gonna start a fire, get the firebox temperature up to 185, so 175 to 185, and then we're gonna circulate it for 24 hours, then we're gonna test the water. So let's go ahead and get a fire going. Not gonna film that, because you guys have already seen that. So we're gonna get a fire going, and then we're gonna check the water uh, 24 hours from now. So most likely we'll check the water on Monday, since it's Saturday night now, Saturday evening. So uh, we will check the water Monday, and yeah, let's go ahead and get a fire going. All right, so we got our fire going here. It The water says 52 degrees, so we got to bring this to 185. So we have some pallets here. We'll grab some other wood. Obviously, we have plenty, so we'll grab plenty of wood to get this fire going. So, yes, um, what we're going to do next is when this gets to 185, we'll test the water on Monday. I'll include that in the back half of the video, and we should be good to roll. So, uh, yeah, we'll finish this video in a hot second. All right, folks, welcome back. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that video. Right now we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna test the water finally. We have ran this machine for um, a little over, over 24 hours. Again, like I said, 175 to 185 for well over a day. So now we're gonna test the water. So first thing you wanna do is, this is your fill hole here. Fill hose here. Kinda wanna bend this a little bit. Open the valve. Ooh, see that steam? Hopefully you can see that steam coming off of that. But anyways, what you want to do is, is you want to drain about a cup, cup's worth. All right, that water's still smoking hot. So all I want to do is I want to swirl around this water. I want to clean this cup out and we're going to, we're going to dump that. So now all we have here is residual water from the machine. You don't want to have any contaminants. So all we're going to do is we're just going to fill some water here. Just enough. Uh, like I said, like I did, you want to drain about a, uh, Enough to get your test kit in. Sorry. Oh, that water's hot. <laughs> All right, so let's go in the shed and let's test this water. Cheers. All right, folks, so here we go. We have our water. We have our test kit. 
And we have, um, those are pH test strips. We don't need to do that because we know that our pH of our water is good already. Um, so all you got to do is take a strip out. Now it says here on the directions, dip the test strip and remove after one second. Shake off the excess liquid compared to color chart within 10 seconds. So hopefully I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to zoom you guys in. There's a little test strip there, kind of like a pool. So let's go one Mississippi. Shake off the excess. Now let's compare. So we are right at the 300 to 350 parts per million. So that we are spot on with our water test. So those two gallons of Molly Armor with the 400 new gallons of water, even though we did overfill it a little bit, uh, we drained some out, we still have a good, nice, safe concentration. So that makes me happy. So let's go ahead and wrap up. All right, folks, so we're gonna wrap up. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think, success. We have new water, we are treated. That new Molly Armor, the central boiler says that you cannot over concentrate. So even if, let's say we added in another gallon, which I wouldn't, um, too much concentration isn't gonna hurt the machine. So that's good. So the Molly Armor, we're right at the 300 to 350 parts per million. So we are good to roll. We are good to shut down the machine. We're going to do an ash clean out next. Um, probably not next video, but we're gonna do that soon. The weather's been, we got rain for the next like four days. So. Uh, we're gonna wait till the rain passes, and then we're gonna do a final ash, uh, ash creosote clean out, an oil spray, and then we should be good for the off season. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. I would like to say a big thank you to the to Bruce at the Summersworth Stove Shop. He's in the next county over. He's the gentleman that actually installed this unit back in 2008, way before we even got here. He has been a blessing, a wealth of knowledge. Answers the phone every time I call. I stop in. I see him. Uh, all the time during the heating season, uh, you know, water tests and shooting the breeze. He's helped me with the new chimney. I can't say enough about him. Please, if you need any central boiler parts, reach out to him. I'll put his contact information below in the description as well as right here at the bottom of this video. Bruce at the Summersworth Stove Shop. Call him. I guarantee you he's an old school guy. He'll help you out. Leave a message if he doesn't answer. He's a one-man band, so he'll make it happen. If you need gaskets, pumps, he gets stuff right from central boiler. can ship right to you direct. And yes, tell him Jay sent you. Great guy. Really appreciate the help. So anyways, I like to wrap up. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think. Give Bruce a holler if you guys need any outdoor boiler parts. He's your man uh, for the job. So yeah, and like I always say, thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. And we will see you out in the woods.